Hi there, it's Asia. You know, I've already lost count of how many times I've taken the IELTS exam. But I definitely talked to several different examiners and could get a real feel of what IELTS speaking exams are like. Today, I'd like to share this experience with you and tell you about the strategies that can help you not only survive this test, but also get a higher score. Okay, let's get started. From my experience, I can tell you that partly your experience depends on your examiner's personality. For example, let's call him examiner number one, he had a little chat with me before the exam started. He asked my name and where I lived and why I was taking this exam. Others didn't do that. Uh, however, there is a way to know for sure if a question is part of your exam or it's just a chat. The exam officially begins when the examiner asks you if they can record it. Whatever is recorded is assessed. Another thing that stood out uh, was that that examiner had no hesitations about interrupting me and did that quite often. Generally, your examiner may interrupt you for different reasons. For example, they manage time, so they may need to move on to the next question. Or they just want to push you a little to see how well you can cope with counterarguments. In this case, they may ask, is it always so? Why do you think so? In this way, they encourage you to prove your point and demonstrate your skills. I must say that all those interruptions felt a bit intimidating, but you should know that they don't affect your score directly. Be prepared that you may be interrupted and just try to switch to the next question straight away. Of course, if the examiner asks the same question again, this means that you are not answering it. It may happen when you are stressed. Just try to concentrate and answer it directly the second time round. Another thing about my examiner number one was that he showed no reaction to what I was saying. He had a complete poker face, so there was no encouragement. Examiner number two was different. Basically, I was sitting in the corridor, waiting. She opened the door and called me. Before I could say hello, she said, this exam is recorded. Like, okay, no chat. However, she was very gentle during the exam. Smiled and nodded to show that she was following what I was saying. And when she wanted to interrupt me, she showed that she wanted to speak. So I could quickly finish my idea and let her ask me the next question. Of course, if I just kept on talking, she would have to stop me. So if you see that your examiner wants to speak, let them. The first two examiners were British and I took those exams in London. Examiner number three was Canadian. That's uh, when I took the IELTS indicator test online from home. Uh, by the way, soon there will be an IELTS academic test you can take from home. It's called IELTS online and I'll tell you more once I know more. But I was telling you about my examiner. She was much more outgoing, laughed and even joked a bit. That was nice, but even if your examiner is very friendly, you shouldn't lose your concentration. They all mark you using the same criteria. And I'm telling you this uh, to show that the atmosphere during your exam may be different, but you should be prepared for this and not let it affect your performance. Whether your examiner is friendly or moody, whether they are smiling at you or looking somewhere else, you're always marked the same way. IELTS speaking tests are assessed using four criteria and a number of requirements. You can find all of them in the document called IELTS Band Descriptors. Ultimately, examiners assess how effectively you can communicate in English and if you can express your thoughts on a variety of topics clearly and naturally. 
For your IELTS speaking strategy, it means this. First of all, don't try to be formal. Of course, you should be respectful and avoid slang or any rude language. But you should still speak informally, like people do. For example, if I'd say, my birthplace is a former capital of Kazakhstan called Almaty. This answer would sound weird because people don't speak this way. Be more natural. I was born in Almaty. This is the former capital of Kazakhstan. And don't try to be original. You're not required to stand out or say something remarkable. It's okay to give boring answers. For example, how do you usually spend your evenings? Well, I try to go to the gym a couple of times a week. Sometimes I meet friends or go shopping, but on most days I just cook dinner and watch some TV. Maybe it's not fancy, but that's what a lot of people do, me included. Next, don't try to be smart. A common problem in IELTS speaking is I don't know what to say. And I regularly catch myself on this thought. Sometimes I do struggle to come up with an idea for part two story, but in most cases, what it really means is I don't have anything interesting or smart to say that I think would be worth listening to. Just say whatever comes to mind. Don't filter it. Your ideas and knowledge are not assessed. If your friend asked you this question, you would say something, right? The next advice is don't try to give complex answers. It's true that your vocabulary and grammar are assessed. The more words you know and the more grammatical structures you use, the higher your ultimate score is. However, you shouldn't try to hack this exam. Don't try to deliberately choose complex words or think that you must find a place to use that past perfect passive tense you were learning last night. Instead, concentrate on answering questions naturally and to the point and your skills will shine through. Next, learn to manage time. Your examiner is responsible for managing time. However, your test will go more smoothly if you feel how much you need to say. If your answers are too short, you're not demonstrating your English. If they're too long, there will be a lot of interruptions, which may be distracting. In my online courses, uh, I even give pre-recorded tests with gaps after each question. And when students take those tests, they learn how long their answers should be. Obviously, some answers can be shorter and some longer, but after all, time limits are the same for everyone. You could try taking a time test on your own. Part one must be between four and five minutes long. Take a stopwatch and ask yourself questions on three topics, around 12 questions and try to answer all of them in about five or six minutes, but definitely not less than four minutes. Part two, the instructions say that you must talk for between one and two minutes. You should aim to talk for two minutes to fully demonstrate your English. Set a timer and talk until your time is up. By the way, you don't need to finish your answer. Part three, is a discussion, which means that the examiner will be helping you develop your answers by asking some follow-up questions. It must last between four and five minutes. At home, take five or six main questions and try to answer them in five or six minutes. My next tip is to practice answering recent questions. Even though the database of IELTS questions is large, certain topics are reused over and over. Find questions from recent exams and practice answering them. If your exam is soon, practice answering those you find particularly difficult. 
and don't learn your answers by heart. You'll be penalized. I actually have a collection of recent IELTS writing and speaking topics and you can download it in the PDF format on our Telegram channel. The link is in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!